Hello, brothers and sisters. You are welcome here. We've got chapter 27 today. Now, this is the enumeration or numbering of the sons of Israel, the heads of fathers' households, the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, and their officers who served the king in all the affairs of the divisions, which came in and went out month by month throughout all the months of the year, each division numbering 24,000. Jashobim, the son of Zabdiel, had charge of the first division for the first month, and in his division were 24,000. He was from the sons of Perez, and was chief of all the commanders of the army for the first month. Dodai, the Ahohite, and his division had charge of the division for the second month, Mikloth being the chief officer, and in his division were 24,000. The third commander of the army for the third month was Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, as chief and in his division were 24,000. This Benaiah was the mighty man of the 30, and had charge of 30, and over his division was Amizabad, his son. The fourth for the fourth month was Azahel, the brother of Joab, and Zebediah, his son, after him, and in his division were 24,000. The fifth for the fifth month was the commander Shamhuth, the Izrahite, and in his division were 24,000. The sixth for the sixth month was uh, Ira, the son of Ekesh, the Tekoite, and in his division were 24,000. The seventh for the seventh month was Helez, the Pelonite, of the sons of Ephraim, and in his division were 24,000. The eighth for the eighth month was Sibakai, the Hushathite, of the Zerahites, and in his division were 24,000. The ninth for the ninth month was Abiezer, the Anathathite, of the Benjamites, and in his division were 24,000. The tenth for the tenth month was Maharai, the Nedophathite of the Zerahites, and in his division were 24,000. The eleventh for the eleventh month was Benaiah, the Pirathonite, of the sons of Ephraim, and in his division were 24,000. The twelfth for the twelfth month was Heldai, the Nedophathite of Othniel, and in his division were 24,000. Now in charge of the tribes of Israel, chief officer for the Reubenites was Eliezer, the son of Zikri, for the Simeonites, uh, Shephatiah, the son of Makkah. For Levi, Hashabiah, the son of Kemuel. For Aaron, Zadok. For Judah, Elihu, one of David's brothers. For Issachar, Omri, the son of Michael. For Zebulun, Ishmael, the son of Obadiah. For Naphtali, Jeremoth, the son of Azrael. For the sons of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Azaziah. For the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Padiah. For the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Edo, the son of Zechariah. For Benjamin, Jael-Ciel, the son of Abner. For Dan, Azarel, the son of Jeroham. These were the princes of the tribes of Israel. But David did not count those twenty years of age and under, because the Lord had said he would multiply Israel as the stars of heaven. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, had begun to count them, but did not finish. And because of this, wrath came upon Israel. And the number was not included in the account of the Chronicles of King David. And this was really because of uh, pure disobedience to what God had commanded them. Verse 25. Now Asmabeth, the son of Adiel, had charge of the king's storehouses. And Jonathan, the son of Uzziah, had charge of the storehouses in the country, in the cities, in the villages, and in the towers. Ezri, the son of Chalub, had charge of the agricultural workers who tilled the soil. Shimei, the Ramathite, had charge of the vineyards. And Zabdi, the Shiftmite, had charge of the produce of the vineyards stored in the wine cellars. Bel Hanan, the Gedarite, had charge of the olive and sycamore trees in the Shephelah, which were the lowlands. And Joash had charge of the stores of oil. Shitri, the Sharonite, had charge of the cattle, which were grazing in Sharon. And Shaphat, the son of Adlai, had charge of the cattle in the valleys. Obiel, the Ishmaelite, had charge of the camels. And Jediah, the Meronathite, had charge of the donkeys. Jaziz, the Hagrite, had charge of the flocks. All these were overseers of the property which belonged to King David. Also, Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a man of understanding, and a scribe. And Jehiel, the son of Hakmoni, tutored the king's sons. Ahithophel was counselor to the king, and Hushai the archite was the king's friend. Jehoiada, the son of Benaiah, and Abiathar succeeded 
Ahithophel, and Joab uh, was the commander of the king's army. Okay, so that'll wrap up the chapter today. We are going to continue in our repentance list and going through that. But real quickly, before I do, I'd like you guys just to pray with me real quick uh, for something that's been on my heart today. Um, so let's bow our heads. Uh, Lord, specifically today, I want to pray for the state of California. Of course, I want to pray for all the states in this nation, but specifically for this one. Um, I pray, God, that you would guide righteous decrees over this land that are biblical and honoring uh, to your intentions for mankind, and that you would remove any in power that would get in the way of your plan or your will for this state. And uh, I just ask for your guidance, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so if you missed yesterday, basically, I've been wanting to pray about repentance and I came across this list online and I thought, you know what, let's go through this together as a group. And then as individuals, when you have some downtime, alone time, if you want to reflect upon what we're reading and, uh, you know, if anything specifically pricks you in the heart that you need to lay before God, let's each and every one of us do that. It's really important. All right, here we go. We left off on complaining. So Philippians says to do all things without grumbling or complaining. And this is something I talk about with my kids and it's something that I actually need daily reminding of, to be honest with you. Okay, being uh, contentious or quarrelsome. Proverbs says that it's an honor for a man to keep away from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. Second Timothy says, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And one more, I like this one from Proverbs, chap Proverbs chapter 26. It says, whoever meddles in a quarrel, not his own, is like one who takes passing a passing dog by the ears. So basically kind of mind your own business if it's not your argument, unless, you know, somebody's getting hurt or something. All right. Um, corrupt communication or impure language. The book of James says that the tongue is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. Um, it's a fire that can set the course of our life on fire and is set on fire by hell, it says. Ephesians says, let no corrupt, filthy, or crude joking come out of your mouths. And elsewhere, the Bible says that whoever does not bridle his tongue deceives his heart. So some very serious talk about what comes out of our mouths. Uh, covetousness, so being basically jealous or desiring somebody's house, boat, job, or it can even be their wife. So very, uh, very sinful stuff. Deceitfulness, dishonesty, lying or tricking somebody into something. Defiling the body. Um, usually this one is in, in context in the Bible to a sexual reference, but it can come in the forms of food, alcohol, or what we even watch or listen to. Desiring the praise of man or trying to be a man pleaser um, above being a God pleaser. And sometimes this can even be family members where we try to make a family member happy above um, being obedient to God. So it's important. Uh, divorce, uh, self-speaking there. Being double-tongued or not living up to our word, not allowing our yes to be yes and no to be no, but just kind of going back and forth. And then um, we talked about this yesterday, but it came up on the list again. It's all over the Bible, drunkenness. It doesn't completely condemn the use of alcohol in the Bible, but specifically addiction and drunkenness. There are many verses about staying sober and alert, and drunkenness is on several different biblical lists of sins that will cast you to hell. So if there is a problem with self-control in this area, it is better not even to light the match and just stay away from it. It uh, can be very dangerous. Okay, guys, we'll stop there and we'll carry on tomorrow. Hope you have a good one. And uh, please do reflect upon these things and lay anything on your heart before God. Okay, God bless you and take care.